when recently when I was here, I went outside after the church, and a lady followed me. I said, Mr. Chesarem, I heard you know Kipchoge. Can you introduce me to him? I asked her, which Kipchoge do you want? He asked me, are there two Kipchoges? <laughs> I told her there is the original Kipchoge, Kipchoge Keino, and then there's Eliud Kipchoge. I know all of you only know Eliud Kipchoge. There is one called Kipchoge Keino. He is the one person who ran in Mexico in 1968 and won gold. So when he came back, he inspired the rest of the people within the region. And that's why we are called the County of Champions. It was the original Kipchoge. So when you was yourselves count of champions, you should say count of champions in long distance. <laughs> in terms of economy, we are not champions. Pastor, we are not champions. We have a long way to go. So I'm going to compare Kenya with other countries. I'm going perhaps to say we are not doing as well. Please don't feel bad if I say that. And then I will now go and tell you what are the attributes for the few I'm calling the tools of success in business. So I'll begin. Now when it comes to champions, Kenya has become so good in long distance. Recently when they were running in Boston Marathon, the best man in America in marathon was asked, Mr. Brown, what number do you think you'll become? He said, man, it depends how many Kenyans are, are here. <laughs> yeah. This graph is showing us, I'm comparing four countries. Four countries, the ones at the far right, the champion, is it Kenya? Is it Kenya? It is where? Singapore. Pastor, you need better slight um, projectors. We give you a lot of money, so we want better projectors because there's no problem with this thing. It is Singapore. Singapore, we started with Singapore, South Korea, China, and Kenya. All in 1993, income per head was $200 for every country. $200 per head, it's called per, per capita income. In the year 1960, 63. Singapore was a very poor island. In 1963, it was actually very, very poor. But one man called Lee Kuan Yew, Lee Kuan Yew, became the Prime Minister of Singapore with the assistance of um, with Israel. They did a, a lot of economic development. And in, over the years, Lee Kuan Yew was in power for 30 years. And Singapore is one of the richest countries in the world. It's number four. Qatar is the first one. Singapore is number four. Kenya is number 153 out of 190 countries. 153. Not a champion to talk of any champion. The next country is South Korea. South Korea in 1961 got independence. South Korea. At a president, he was initially a military man. But South Korea, in no time, developed into a big country with a big per capita income. And they were assisted by Germany. South Korea said they were going to do steel. They were going to do steel, steel manufacturing steel. Even the Americans do not believe they are going to do it. But they managed it. South Korea, 
do a lot of things as we talk now. Fridges, cars, name it, South Korea. They are way ahead of Kenya. Their per capita, I think, is 36,000. Is that clear there? Per capita of South Korea is 34,000. Per capita of Kenya is 2,000. Then China. China equally got their independence in 1959. Their first leader it was called Mao Zedong. Mao took power in 1959, and his term from 1959 until he died in 1976, a lot of Chinese died under Mao. Because Mao, when he took power, he began to go the great leap forward in 1959. Then 1966, the Cultural Revolution. 80 million Chinese died under Mao. But in 1976, he died. And in 1978, a gentleman called Deng. Deng. He was 74 years my age now. 74 years. Up until 1976, everything in China was controlled by the state. But when Deng came, he said he visited Japan, he went to America, he went to Hong Kong, and he began to encourage private enterprise in China. And China literally took off. China as a country is now the world's powerhouse. The Chinese are everywhere. Have you seen them in Eldoret? Have you seen them? So with that background, in 1963, we got independence as Kenyans. In 1963, first president, Jomo Kenyatta, and his aim was to eliminate three things, poverty, ignorance, and disease. 60 years on, we are nowhere eliminating those problems. As we are talking here, we have serious unemployment, we have sickness, we have great poverty, we have people on the streets marching with sufferers on the head. We are looking for food. We want food. And God is saying, why are you marching? You've got land, you've got people. Something must be wrong with these people. But there's an opportunity for you business people to address those challenges. The problems that Kenya is facing are opportunities for you business people. Oh, yeah. yes? yes? They are opportunities for us. So I want to pick 10 tools. I'm going to tell them tools. The first one is personal integrity. Personal integrity. The, the, you don't need to write it down. We'll give it to you in WhatsApp, email, the lot. Pasta. Kenya is known for two things. Long distance champions in running. But sadly, also known for corruption. Najua yo. We are known for corruption. They say in the 19, let me know which year, a civil servant, a very senior civil servant, went to Nigeria and met his counterpart. And after the meetings in Lagos, they went home. And the Kenyan asked the Nigerian, how come? You are living in a very big palace. He says, Oga, come here. Look through the window. Can you see the hospital there? He said, yes. 10 percent. 10 percent. He took 10 percent to build this palace. So he took. He, he stole government money to build a palace for himself. A few years later on, the Nigerian came back to, came to visit Kenya. This man was living in 
Mutaiga. Big palace. The Nigerian told him, you are telling me you, I, I'm living in a palace. You are living in a better palace than me. How come? He said, come, okay. Look at that. Can you see Madare? Can you see the big hospital? I can't see it. Ah, he says, 100 <laughs> percent. We, we have got a culture of stealing. If we are not stealing from Kemsa, we are stealing on COVID. We are stealing. We are trying to steal, buying mosquito nets. We are stealing everywhere. But as a business community, my advice is your personal integrity must be transparent. If you have to do business, don't take bribes. There's a lot of corruption in Kenya. But as Christians, please shine as the light. Don't take bribes, don't give bribes. And to fortify your energy on this area, keep reading Proverbs. Integrity, they say there was a, a, um, a lawyer, a very senior lawyer, a judge, a, a lawyer. <clears throat> he employed a younger lawyer. When the younger lawyer came to his office, he, he told him, look, if this telephone rings, pick it up and tell them I'm not in. So truly, because as they were speaking, the telephone rang. The young lawyer picked the telephone, said, is so and so there? He said, yes, sir, he's around. Let me pass the phone to him. Passed to him. The guy was very, very annoyed. But as soon as he finished, he was going to shout out to tell him, I told you not to give me the phone. But the young man quickly told him, sir, I'm not going to lie for you, but equally, I'm not going to lie to you. So he realized this young man was a person of integrity. So you need to have integrity. In my village, there was a, a gentleman who had borrowed money from his neighbor, and he kept telling him, come on this day, he was not paying him. Come on this day, he was not paying him. So this time he asked him, come at this time. 10 o'clock, the, the man comes, whom he was owing money, and the, 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 the man told his wife, when you see a rough son coming, tell him I'm not in. But he went to sleep next door. He, he had just gone to sleep. So when the gentleman arrived at 10 o'clock, sat, met a wife. Of course, in Kalenjin, you don't rush quickly to what you came for. But he soon he asked the gentleman, the lady, where is a The lady says, a is sleeping. He's just sleeping. <laughs> He's sleeping. So the man who was all the money, he said, Arab son, come out of your bedroom. You come, come. The money you owed me, I assume, take it from me. I saw you are dead. I'm not going to go die away. away. So that wife was faithful. So it was an, a person of integrity. So integrity is very important. Final story on this integrity. There were Kenyans who went to Japan, a government delegation. They booked in a hotel. The next day, they were traveling from Tokyo to Osaka by train, pasta. And um, when they reached Osaka to check into the hotel, one of the delegates had lost his wallet. It's very worried. Those days, you carried the dollars. Everything was lost. Within five hours, the wallet was returned with all the money. If you go to Japan, there are people of integrity. The Japanese society are people of integrity. So I want you as business community to be people of integrity, to be honest. Effective time management. 
the pastor was being polite to you to say you kept time. You didn't keep time. When we arrived here at 7, there were only 20 people. She will say, my 7. You say 7. 7 o'clock is 7 o'clock. I went to a function the other day at Ruba. What do you call that hotel? Eka Hotel. Pastor, they say, 7 o'clock breakfast. And um, it was supposed to be 7 to 9.30. I arrived at seven. There was only one man, a Mr. Ruta. One. And people trickled in. By 9.30, we are not eating the breakfast. But I can only congratulate you, we, we at least ate here. We ate. There's something called African time and universal time. My young people, none of you are 74 years old. If you want to succeed, keep time. Oh, yes. If you want to succeed, time. in Japan, in Germany, if you are late by one minute for an appointment, don't bother to come. Don't bother to come. When I joined Central Bank in 1993, see, they, they would come at 8.15, 8.30. 8 ah. Then I told the management, I'm not used to this. What we are going to do, we will put webcam cameras in every door, and we'll be seeing who is late. Oh, Mr. Chesare must turn the bank into a prison. I said, in which prison do the prisoners come back the next day? <laughs> <laughs> My good people, if there is one attribute you can brand for yourself, mm. is to keep time. I bought a watch in Singapore when I was coming from, after working in Australia, in 1979, September, for 2,000 shillings. Recently it got bad, but it has kept me in time. Time, if I ask you to come and see me at a certain hour, actually in Central Bank, if the meeting with the bankers is 9 o'clock, they would come. 9.05, nine the doors have been closed. They say, what has happened? Has the meeting been canceled? They said, no, the meeting has started, the doors have been closed. But why, why can't we go in? We were in traffic jam. We told you the meeting is 9 o'clock. The next meeting I had with the bankers, so in case you have a been meeting with me, which is very rare, if you don't come on time, don't bother to come. Why? Because I have only got 24 hours in a day. You may be one with 25, 26. <laughs> so time management is important. Tap the talent of, of other people. It is so important you work and tap the talent of other people. In the flower farm I have got, we have got over 520 people. 520. There is talent everywhere. So one of the attributes you must learn is to tap the talent of other people. Accountants, lawyers, please don't be shy to tap the talent of other people. That's how you'll succeed. Importance of hard work. The sad news is we are a lazy society. We are lazy. We don't work hard. If you look at the Japanese, if you look at the Chinese, I've had the fortune of working with Chinese. Not in China, but here in Kenya, Pasta. In the rural Kenya, they, they make our roads. 
and I've had to meet with them because we need Calvert here, we need a road here. Those people work hard. In the next 15, 20 years, we will have no problem with food in Kenya. In the next 15, 20, why am I saying so? Because the Chinese farmers will be here. The Chinese are going to do the farming for us. When the railway was, that was being made in Kenya, the British brought the Indians. The Indians you see here did not come from here too. Their ancestors came to build the railway. And now they control our economy. Don't cheat yourselves. Most of you went to university with Indians, with our compatriot Indians. Have you seen Indians in Kenya looking for work? Have you seen them looking for work? So they work for themselves. Am I talking to you? Or if the phone is not working? <laughs> the Indians control the economy of Kenya. Now you are here. So in the next 15, 20 years, there's a new wave. And be known to you, there's a new wave of immigrants. They are called Chinese. And in 15, 20 years, there will be no demonstrations with Sufria on the head. They will seriously work and create. Pasta, the opportunities are everywhere. If you go to Nairobi, which you don't go most often, I went to Nairobi first in 1969. If you go to Nairobi now, Pasta, and I'll take you, it's a place called Kilimani. Mkiona nyumba imeenda. They are like mushrooms. Who is building them? Don't we have contractors here? Mkijenga nyumba, mnachenga kitu kito. So, can we learn from the Chinese? Can we learn from the Chinese? Is there any shame from learning from the We need to learn from the Chinese. These people work very hard. I had friends, the Japanese. I have a man called Professor Ino. And when we worked with Mutabadi, he was Minister of Finance, I was governor of Central Bank. Professor Ino would work virtually the whole night to prepare the report. She sees it to Nalala Satatu. What is wrong with us? We must work hard. We are a very, very lazy society. We are lazy. If you wake up after five in the morning, you are going nowhere. If you are waking up after five in the morning, you are going nowhere. <laughs> Am I too hard on you? <laughs> now, number five, utilize modern tools. Modern tools in terms of there's computers now. I had the president saying they are going to lay 100,000 of fiber optic. You business people take advantage of modern tools. They use modern tools. <clears throat> Number six, propensity for action. There is a culture of you have an idea to do a business, you are delaying, you are delaying. The early bird catches the worm. So you need to move with a sense of speed and urgency. <clears throat> Continuous learning and improvement. Please. Continue to learn. There's something called Chin um, Japanese Kaizen. Keep improving, keep improving. Because if you don't improve, you'll be going backwards. 
When you go on this Kapsabit road, when you join Kapsabit road, Pasta on the left, there's a new petrol station. What's the name? Ru rupees. A petrol station called Rupees. Very clean, very clean. And if you go a little down to your right, there's another petrol station. It's called um, National Oil. National Oil. <laughs> it's run down. Have you noticed? Yeah. It has run down because the people who started National Oil refused to keep the standards and to keep innovating. So they are not aware. It's gone down. So any business you've got, you must continuously improve. Don't allow it to be like National Oil. Number eight, contact productive meetings. Most meetings in Kenya are meetings where minutes are kept and hours are lost. The minutes are kept and the hours are? Because we go to a meeting pastor, because of our central bank, I would go to a member of council of Nairobi University. 30 people. They would come at their own time, and the meetings were not focused. If you are a business person, please ensure when you have a meeting, what are we discussing, what are we going to decide, who will do what, and you finish. Don't have meetings that go on forever. Now, you business people, prepare annual budgets. Prepare a budget. You need to prepare a budget for your business. What's your income? What expenses? What profit will you make? After the budget, prepare the annual statements. You need to prepare financial statements. Finally, pasta, pasta. All of you business people here, you must be able to read financial statements. Even if you are not an accountant, when your accountant prepares for you accounts, you must know whether you made a profit or loss, how much cash have you got. You cannot really be a business person if you don't understand accounts. So, Reverend, if there's one thing you can do for these good people of mine, organize for them to be given some training in ability to read financial statements. With that, Pastor, I finish my talk, and I really wish you well. As I said, I'm 74 years old. I run the flower farm. I run the avocados. My mother, who is 94, runs the dairy. Uh, so <clears throat> the story was being told, Pastor, when this gentleman went to uh, get insurance, he was 80 years old, and he said he wants to get insurance. He was told, please come on Wednesday. He said, on Wednesday, my grandfather is going to Wait, how old is your grandfather? He says, 120 years. He says, how come? He's going to get married at 120. He said, because his parents are pushing him to get married, because the, the parents are 140 years old. <laughs> <laughs> so if you see me here when I'm 140, don't be surprised. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, wow, wow. I think we can do better. Let's stand up. Let's stand up. Come on, let's stand up.